Thank you for joining me once again on Crunch Econometrics. In today's tutorial, I will show you how to estimate the vector error correction model in Stata. But please, before you go ahead, I will encourage you to watch the three videos I'm showing you on the screen. The first one is on how to specify the vector error correction model. And number two and three are based on how you can estimate the VAR model, discuss the results, and also perform diagnostics and discuss the results. These three videos will give you the foundation that you require to understand how to estimate the vector error correction model. So this is a three variable vacuum model. And remember I said in the video where I talked about how to specify a vector error correction model. You derive a vector error correction model by differencing a VAR. And once you do that, you lose a lag. So this is the way you have to specify your vector error correction model. All the variables on the system will now take a k minus 1 lag, not k. And your dependent variable must have the difference operator. And never forget, this is a very distinguishing uh, factor in the vector error correction model configuration. This is the error correction term and this is the adjustment parameter. So you can easily adopt what you are seeing to suit your own study. This is how you specify a vector error correction model. And below here are the notes to the model specification. Remember I said each variable takes a k minus 1 lag. So the lag length is reduced by 1. And these are the short-run coefficients. The betas, the phi's, and the gammas. They are short-run coefficients. Once again, lambda here is the speed of adjustment. And it must come with a negative sign to ensure convergence to long-run equilibrium. The ECT here denotes the lagged value of the error correction term, which is the residual obtained from the long-run equation. And the U's here are simply the stochastic error terms, often called innovations or shocks. What are the basic steps to estimating vacuum in Stata? I have listed here eight steps. First of all, know how to specify the model. I've shown you an example. Prepare Stata for time series analysis. If you don't do step two, Stata will not run your analysis. Step three, perform stationarity test. Make sure all the series are stationary at first difference, definitely not at second difference. Go ahead to determine the optimal lag length P for the entire model. Perform Johansson co-integration test with the P lags. Step six now. If there is no co-integration from the outcome of Johansson, estimate only the unrestricted VAR, which is a short-run model. Step 7. If there is co-integration, specify the vector error correction model with P lags, but the model will be estimated with P minus 1 lags. That is the way Stata is configured. Then step 8. Perform diagnostic test. So having stated all this now, I'm going to skip some of these steps because I've covered them in my VAR tutorial. So please, once again, make sure you watch the VAR videos so that you can understand what I'm about to do today. Once again, these are data editor, and these are the three variables we are using, log of PDI, log of PCE, and the log of GDP. In my usual practice, I have my log file on to track all the estimations I'll be doing today. And it's always good for you to have a log file so that you can easily duplicate your work. The do files are ready with all the codes to be executed. But I'm going to show you the menu approach so that you can know how to maneuver within the Stata interface. So I may not outrightly use the codes I wrote here. I will show you the menu approach and also show you how you can build up your do file from codes extracted using the menu approach. So let's kick off. Step 1 says specify the model. We've done that. I've shown you an example. Now let's go to step 2. Let's prepare Stata for time series analysis, and with that, I run this command, have highlighted it, and execute. So here we have the output from Stata. We are now set to run all time series analysis. I have the quarterly data, as you can see here. Step 3 says, perform stationarity test. Please watch the VAR tutorials I told you about. Watch those videos. If you don't know how to perform it, my videos are very simple. So please go through those videos, and you can cover step 3. And you can also cover step four. That is to determine optimal lag. The optimal lag length is two. So I'm going to adopt that. I move on to step five. 
perform Johansen cointegration test with P lags. Remember my P equals 2 in this case. So how do we perform Johansen? This is what we do. We go to statistics, we maneuver to multivariate time series, then we click on cointegrating rank of a VECM. Click on that, then you are in this interface. I've been here before, so let me reset. I click R. So now everything is new. In the dependent variable section, you list all the variables. Remember, in the vector error correction model, all variables are endogenous. Okay, so list all the variables. And the variable you list first is your target variable. So I'm going to list PDI first, log of PDI. So you can see all my variables are listed with PDI first, followed by PC and GDP. Now maximum lag to be included in the underlying VAR model is 2 because that is the outcome of my AIC uh, lag order selection criteria. For trend specification, I'm using constant. The constant here simply denotes unrestricted constant with no trend. So everything is okay, I click okay. So this is the outcome of my Johansson test for cointegration. Normally, you can also include the max Egan statistic if you want. This is just the trace statistic. By default, Stata will give you trace statistic. If you want to have the max Egan statistic also, it's the same approach. Just go to statistics, multivariate time series, click on cointegrating rank of a VECM. Now, everything is still the way they are. Go to reporting and check the box that says report maximum Egan value statistic. Once you click that, click OK, and you now have the two results. So how do you interpret this? Under the ranks here, 0, 1, 2, 3, these are all the null hypothesis. And what will be your decision criteria? You reject the null hypothesis of no cointegration if the value of the trace statistic is higher than the 5% critical value. So we can see here, the null hypothesis here is saying there is zero cointegration in this model. And from the value of the trace statistic, we are rejecting the null hypothesis. We are also rejecting the null hypothesis of one cointegrating equation in this model because trace statistics is higher than the critical value. But when you look at null hypothesis two cointegrating equation, we cannot reject that null hypothesis. You can even see it's asterisk meaning that in this model, there are two cointegrating equations. And if you look closely, the results of the trace statistic and the Mark Egan statistic are very, very similar. So you may wonder, which one should I use? As a researcher, you are disposed to using any one of them. So the outcome of our Johansson test is that we have two cointegrating equations in this model. So if you want to build up a do file with this command, just copy what is here, Control c then move it to your do file. I have the command here already. You can see it here. It's the same thing. So it's either you use the command approach or the menu approach. So we have two cointegrating equations, but it's always advisable to estimate your vector error correction model with just one cointegrating equation keeping it simple okay so now we are skipping step six step six simply says if there's no cointegration estimate unrestricted var but since there's cointegration we are skipping step six so we move over to step seven with cointegration specify the vacuum with the p lags but the model is estimated with p minus one lags that is the way stata is configured so let's estimate the vacuum. So we click on statistics, we go to multivariate time series. Now we select vector error correction model. So the dialog box opens up and here, just like we did before, we indicate all the variables starting with PDI. So I've listed all the dependent variables, number of cointegrating equations, even though we obtain two from Johansson, like I said, keep it simple. I'm only going to use one cointegrating equation. The maximum lag to be included in the underlying VAR model will be 2. Remember I said you must indicate 2 lags even though Stata will estimate it with 2 minus 1 because that is the way Stata is configured. So I'm going to leave it here as 2 lags. Trend specification remains the way it is, constant. Constant means unrestricted constant and no trend. 
I don't do any other thing. I click OK. Have the results. You can see the code I just executed. And the waste theta output is all these are the short run coefficients. The target variable is always top left while other uh, regressors are listed here. Anytime you see underscore C1, that is the adjustment coefficient, the speed of adjustment. So you can see it for PDI, PCE, and GDP because we have three equations that makes up the entire system. And below here is a long run equation often called the Johansson normalization restriction. The restriction here is placed on PDI, which I've indicated as my target variable. So here is a long run equation from where the error correction term is generated. That is why you can see underscore C minus one indicating the co-integrating equation. So this is a long run equation in this vector error correction model. So here we have the extracts of the VCM output. Remember, this is the Johansson normalization restriction uh, report I showed you earlier, which I call the long run equation. I hope it's clear enough for you to see. And if you want to interpret it, you must reverse the signs. If you want to interpret the normalization report of Johansson, the signs of the coefficients must be reversed. In this case, we are going to say that PCE has a positive effect on PDI and GDP has a negative effect on PDI. The signs must be reversed during interpretation. I have some simple notes here. PDI is positioned as a dependent variable and when you are interpreting, simply say something like in the long run, log of PCE has a positive impact while the log of GDP has a negative impact on the log of PDI. The coefficients are also statistically significant at the 1% level. How do we know? Look at the Z statistic, negative 8.08, .08, and look at this one, 6.05. The p-values here are below 1%. So that tells us that these two coefficients are statistically relevant to predict movements or changes in PDI. And you can also conclude by saying that log of PC and log of GDP have asymmetric effects on the log of PCE in the long run on average Ceteris Paribus. Asymmetric effects, what does that tell you? They have opposite impacts on PDI. Now let's look at this result. Remember I showed you the ECT equation, which is expressed like this in the generalized form. Now extracting what we obtain from Stata, this is the way it is spelled out. Negative three, 631 for PCE and positive GDP. So this is the way it is spelled out directly from Stata. Let me show you again. PCE negative 3.63 and GDP positive 3.07. Constant is negative 4.919. Just to show you how the ECT is computed. Now looking at the VECM model itself. This is the generalized form of how you can specify it. And this is the way the output came out in Stata, where we have the log of PDI, which is changed in YT in the generalized form. We have sigma here, which is a constant. You can see it. This is the lag of the dependent variable. And we can see the coefficient here, negative 0.144. This is the coefficient of the lag of PCE, which is denoted by X in this example. And this is the coefficient of the lag of GDP, negative 0.099 which is denoted by R in the generalized form. And here is the adjustment parameter, negative 0.067, which is lambda. So how do you interpret the error correction term coefficient, also known as the adjustment coefficient? You can say something like, the adjustment term, you indicate it, is statistically significant at the 10% level, suggesting that the previous year's errors or deviation from long-run equilibrium are corrected for within the current year at a convergence speed of 6.7%. The statistical relevance of this error correction term is at 10%. So if you are willing to take a 10% signals level, then you are good to go. But if you have indicated how far to be 5%, then you may want to reject this adjustment coefficient. So we have concluded how to estimate the vector error correction model. Let's go ahead to perform some diagnostics. To do that, we go to statistics. 
you click on multivariate time series, you maneuver to VEC diagnostics and test. So the first one is LM test for residual autocorrelation. Here, the maximum order of autocorrelation, because we are using two lags, we leave it the way it is, and we are still using the active VEC results. So we click OK. So we can see here, even at two lags, there is no autocorrelation. So this is very good. For us to test for normality, we go back to statistics, multivariate time series, VEC diagnostics and test. Now you click on test for normally distributed disturbances. All I want is the Jacobera, which I've indicated. I'm still using the active VEC results. I click OK. So you can see for the Jacobera test, since we have three equations that make up the entire VEC system, for the first equation, we can see that um, the errors are normally distributed, but same cannot be said for the PCE equation. But for GDP, the errors are normally distributed. And overall, for this model, the errors are not normally distributed. So this is the outcome of a normality test. So let us test for model stability. We go back to statistics, multivariate time series, VEC diagnostics and test. Now click on, so now you click on check stability condition. So again, we are still using the active results. We click OK. So here is the outcome. The VEC spec imposes two units moduli. So this is also good. If you want to build your do file, just simply copy all these commands and take it to your do file. You can see this is what I've done. So these are the codes I just executed. So we have completed all the steps required to estimate a vector error correction model in Stata. So to wrap up, remember the target variable is always placed first. To decide on the maximum lag length is an empirical issue. If you use too many lags, you are going to lose degrees of freedom. Your coefficients may become not significant and you may suffer multicollinearity. And if you use too few lags, you may also run into the problem of having specification errors. So the way out is to use the optimal lags from any of this information criterion. Perform Johansson co-integration test. The outcome of your Johansson test will tell you whether to go ahead to perform a vector error correction model or simply VAR. If you are specifying vector error correction model, make sure you specify it with the P lags but the model is estimated with a P minus one lags. Interpret your coefficients as having Ceteris paribus effects, then perform diagnostics. Let me clarify point number six again. You must specify the vector model with P lags, but the model is estimated with P minus one. Let me show you the results one more time. This is the outcome of our vector uh, estimation. Remember, we indicated two lags when we are trying to uh, configure the VECM uh, model. But by the time Stata executed our command, it only brought out one lag each for the regressors. So this is a P minus one estimation. So always use the real lags that you obtained from the information criterion into the VECM specification. Whenever Stata wants to estimate, it will estimate it with a P minus one, as you can see from this example. If you still need more references on the VECM model, please consult any of these textbooks and also assess several journal articles that use the procedure. This is how far I'll go today on how to estimate a vector error correction model in Stata. Thank you for staying with me. Subscribe to my channel if you have not done so. Share my videos and my links to your friends. Crunch Econometrics is dedicated to beginners and intermediate users. Thank you very much. Don't go away. I'll be right back.